Okay, I'm back to working on the landscape quilt. And you'll notice I have added some more leaves because I decided with a base that big that the top needed to be a lot bigger. And I've added some definition to the mountains, although that doesn't look right yet. But what I did is I used the Ink Tents fabric dye pencils. And so until I actually put water, or I like prefer to use a gel medium, the colors won't really bloom. I also have some fabric markers. These are brush tip fabric markers. Very nice. You have to use markers that are made for fabric if you want them to be color fast. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just doing some touch up. So re-gluing things I need to glue. Because what I'm doing is I'm going to be doing some drawing. Highlighting. I've been highlighting the lambs. Drawing in their little black faces and feet. If they're the Suffolk's or if they're the, the other breeds, I draw in some little definition in their coats. I'm coming in now with marker, and I'm defining the tree. And then I'll be coming in in a moment and defining some of the leaves on the tree. Because I was looking out my window, and you can see lines in the leaves and the trees. So it's good to just put a little definition and give yourself the look of true leaves. So, and I'd use different colors because that's what I see in nature. I see some light differentiations. I see some dark differentiations. So, and I use a light hand. I can always go back and add more, but I can't go back and take it away, especially with these markers. With the ink tents, they're a little more adjustable. So you can add more water to kind of thin out the look. All right, now, let me show you where I've added, I've added some dark ink tints, and when I use the gel medium, it'll help spread the colors. Also, the reason you use gel medium on the ink tints is because if you use just water, it tends to make the dye run too much. So like under here, I've used some ink tints. You'll notice the grass kind of pop out. Now watch these sheep, how they, the color develops in those. Now you're really starting to see. You can see more easily how the color in the sheep pop out once I apply the medium. Let me show you these sheep. And you'll see, you'll notice how much brighter they get when I brush the medium. Now, some people have said they use gel medium with the ink tints. Some people I've heard go to like Walmart and get a big bottle of um, aloe vera gel. And they said it works just as well. But the main thing is by using something that goes on a little thicker, you will avoid the colors running. Okay, so it's definitely and then you can now and you can always go back with the ink tints and with with the background wet put in some color. See how it just it'll just come to life. So that's what I'm working on now. Okay, so I want to add some highlights to the water. 
So I'll come in and put some gel and then I can come in with the white ink tints and I don't know if you can see but it is putting some white ink down on the top of this water. And then if I want some more of the yellow coloring I can come in with this marker because I've put some yellow fabric on it. Alright, so what I'm doing, oh, I know another place I can show you. I did a lot of ink tense marker over by this rock. And so what you're doing, it's like using a colored pencil, but you'll find that then once you put the medium on, you really see the difference. You can see what you've been working on. Like back here, behind the water, I can now, now it's coming in, I'm getting more subtle nature colors that I've added slowly but surely. Like I said, you can come back in and add something. Like, I'll take some of this green and oh look, see since I already have the gel on, it just comes out really, really easily. Now let's say I add too much, like that's a little bit strong. Well then I come back in here and get some more of the gel and look, you can soften it right up, it like melts it into the background. So it's like an easy to use, it's like a very easy to use um, watercolor. That's the effect you get. So. I'm going to come in and where this grass stops, I'm going to make a little, little put a little more green in to kind of blend the this fabric to that. And as you see, when I rub the gel on there, then I get the color. So now it's kind of coming alive. I like that look. Alright, well I'm going to come in close to the water. Let me put some of this. It's like a lime yellow because I want to set the water apart from the regular pasture. I like it. Just gives a subtleness right up near the edge of the water. Alright. I would definitely like to come over here and add some definition. And then I'll come over and add a little of this. And then let me get a darker green. Because, you know, fields are just all different colors. So by adding all of this, I think I'll get a more natural looking field. Here is a more olive color. Okay. Now, let's see what it looks like with the gel medium on. Okay, so it brings that, look, see how it brings it more alive? Now, I want to rub a little bit more on, rub it a little bit more so I don't see too many pencil marks. More just like, just like clumps of grass out there. And then, I think I might come, yeah, I'm going to come through with some of this. Just, I don't want everything to be vertical out there. See? And you just work until it looks more natural. It looks more like fields that you see. So I'm going to come out here and do some of this. And I'm even thinking of putting some... Uh, the reason I like these versus the fabric markers is these are a lot more uh, flexible. 
then once you put a marker spot there, it's there. But with the ink tents, you can kind of blend it. So I'm going to put some more lines this way. Okay. Then I'll come in and put a little definition. And I will bring some of this in. And like I said, don't worry. You can kind of see some of my lines. They look a little obvious. But once I can work the medium into the fabric as much or as little as I want, and I think that will give it... I can be as subtle or as dark as I wish. Okay, now load my brush with some more medium and come in here. So you notice I just have a brush that I can kind of scrub around the fabric because I find that gives it the best look. Um, I'm not painting as such. Now I wiped out a little too much of this definition so I'm going to come back in with some color then I'm going to come in with a very light hand and do some more of the lumps, the clumps of grass, putting some near the bank, you know. So it's just, with nature, it's kind of just a layering of colors. I'm lucky. I've got um, a little pond across the street that I look out on uh, every day. So I see a lot of this and uh, really helps me kind of learn what does that really look like. There's always little things growing up by the edge. Okay. Now let's see. Let's get some more of this dark in here too. And see how I'm just very light just very light the way I add it and kind of random. You know, every once in a while you'll have a clump, but then you make it go. All right, so now I'm going to brush off excess medium. This time I just want to have a light touch with the medium so I don't erase too much of it. And never worry if you erase too much and you put more on. Just remember that the layers are what make it more natural. The depth of the color only enhances. All right, so how is that? I think that's a lot. It's hard to hold this up. I think <laughs> I think that you have a lot more depth to the pasture now. And I can always come back tomorrow and do a little more tweaking. But some of, the, some of the grass clumps were a little obvious, so. Now, I'm going to come here and fade out this pasture as it gets further away. So I'm going to come in here with this color. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Give it a little light. It goes lighter the further away from your eye. Not as defined either. So, okay. Now, so what I'm doing is I'm just coming in with markers, ink tints, any fabric paints, putting on definition. Let me show you. Now, this is one thing. I tried putting some definition on with the ink tints, but sometimes it's hard to get a crisp edge. And putting a little edge on things really does define them. You don't want a big edge. You don't want it to look like a cartoon. But see how that rock now is just a little more definite. And I might even sneak in here and do just little touches. Okay. Then I've got this old rusty truck here. So I need to have this a little more defined or else it just kind of disappears. And uh, 
So this is where having the marker now comes in handy. So it just depends on, you know, what you're working with, which medium you want to use. And, uh, but outlining this old rusty truck is good. And here's part of it. And here is another part. Here is the fender for the tire. Okay, so I think that, that helps right there. Some of these plants, you might want to put in a few little definitions of these plants that are growing. These trees that, these weed, little weed trees that are coming up here. Give those a little definition. But this is, this is one of the reasons I love art quilts, because it kind of reminds me of when I was a kid and used to color and use construction paper and make a little world. So I like that. So I'll probably come in here and define this a little better. And then I want to define this a little better. Outlining can help make something seem a little more purposeful than random. So like in here where these little weed trees are growing. I'm going to outline a little bit of this. Okay. All right. So now let's give these. I already used the ink tents to give the sheep a little definition. Let's come in with a little bit of marker. But now I have to be careful because I don't want these looking like a cartoon or a coloring book. No paint by number here. Just a very fine line to help them stand out. Just a touch. Just a touch, too. I'm serious about that. All right. This is when you can put things like nail, nail holes, the edges of the board where they come together. And then here, I'm running across the top of this board and the bottom. Especially the bottom because that's always, you know, more of a shadow. Here's a little lamb body. See, this lamb kind of disappeared until you outline him. So, and then outline the post. But you see how you just get a little more definition? And let's outline. And see, it's not, it's nothing you have to be perfect with, these little stone. But it's nothing you have to be perfect with. Just come sometime I miss the edge. It's okay. Fill it in if you want. But the top normally would be lighter than the bottom board, the bottom of the board, but you have to still give it some definition. So even this clump, okay, you see this clump of of little wildflowers. Giving it definition helps. As long as you don't do too much. Don't get carried away. Just a little definition. And it just, it's almost, 
you know, just taking the time to play with it. And, uh, I think you'll like it. So, find on sale especially, look for the fabric markers to go on sale. Look for, um, ink tents. Now, I know you can go to Amazon and get ink tents. But here we go. Since this sheep is lighter, I'm just doing a very light touch to outline it. Same with this one down here. To his little feet. Come along here with the board and give it a little outline. And I'm not worried about some of these stray threads because I'm going to be taking um, I'm going to be taking invisible thread and stitching everything down. So they'll be stitched down in time. So do you, do you see the difference now? This is all making our trees got more definition. In fact, what I did is where I've put these little bump outs, I make them look like they were um, not old knot holes where a limb has been lost off of that, like right here. And feel free to come in and kind of give some more defining lines. Trees are living things that have gone through a lot in their long years. So, this one, give this a little de definition. Alright, so now these, let's, I love my little Suffolk sheep. So I'm going to give these a little outline. And the reason I say a little one is because they're supposed to be out much further away. So you got to be careful you don't go too thick or else they'll look like they're up close and just extremely tiny. <laughs> Alright, so does that make sense? And this one I'll just give a little bit. And not every one has to be outlined as much as the other. If you want to draw your the person's eye to certain parts, then you can outline it more. If not, you don't have to. And don't forget to go up into the tree. Give it a little definition. So, I'm going to just take my time, like right here, between the different tree lines here. I can get give these some definition. And if you don't want to use black, you could always use brown. Some of these things I may just pull up the brown one with. But, um... Brown, it, if you have a gray marker, charcoal gray can be really good. And like here, I'll do another little defining line here. Now, I'm not going to use the marker on the mountains because I can tell it would leave lines that are just too sharp and you can't blend them in. And those mountains are supposed to be so far in the background that you're not supposed to be able to see everything that's going on. So, and make sure you outline your tree. Give it a definite edge there. In fact, these branches, let's see if we can give them some little definition. The limbs, trunk.
So, how's that looking? All right. And so we see these three sheep. And, you know, it looks like some of those lines might be a little dark. I'll see how they look when they're dry. Remember, they're wet, so they're... Oh, yeah. They, they're they wet, so they won't look quite as dark once they're dry. All right. Now, come back over. Let And see how these sheep just kind of are barely there? So I'm going to come in and very carefully give them a light touch of outlining. It's a light touch. I'm going to darken this one's face a little bit. Uh, his face looks funny. I might have to keep working on his face. Don't want him to look like a panda bear. Alright, so, you see what I mean now? They, they, they belong. Now here's a rock down here. So let's give this a little definition. Go along the fence line. Give this. Here's tree roots. Let's give them definition. I haven't done yet the, the fence boards, nails. Oops. Got a boo-boo. So I'll figure out what I'm going to do with that. I don't know right now. I might have to cut out. Oh. Well, might have made it worse. Might have to cut out. Oh, there we go. And that was on a marker, and it worked. So that was nice. But I can always cut out another clump of something and put it there. So don't even be afraid of your... Don't be afraid of your mistakes. The only person who never made a mistake is somebody who doesn't even try, and that doesn't even sound fun to me. Okay, so is this looking better to you? Is it giving it a little more definition? I was really tickled that one of my new subscribers said that she got brave enough to do her first landscape and gave it to her sister and her sister loves it. So I'm so tickled. Way to go. It really is easy. And let's say the worst comes to worst and you don't like it. Well, we've only glued it so far, so we can rip it off and do something different. You know, it's our world, and we can do whatever we want to it. And next week when I, um, well, it might be a couple weeks. The next time we meet, I am going to be doing some, and it might be a couple weeks before I get it on. But that's when I'm going to start doing the thread quilting. And boy, can thread bring a picture alive. So that's basically what we're doing, is, is the fabric, you try to choose fabrics wisely. And they act as your backdrop. And then... Um, you get all your colors. Kind of like, have you heard of block, the term blocking? Well, you kind of block in the colors and the details, the large details, with your fabrics. And then you come along with thread and markers and start to make it really come alive. 
I just think the doing the boards with these are so cute. And don't worry, they will fade some. Remember, I um the fabric is kind of wet now. So it's going to look a little bit more pronounced than it would. Once it dries, it'll it'll get more subtle. So don't let it shock you. All right. So I think I've done most of the painting that I'm going to do today. Most of... Well, actually, I've got to work up on this tree. But I'm going to use something more subtle. I'm not going to use this black. This black is just... I might use it just a touch. Like, like see, for the background here. Maybe for some shadowing like this. You know, with the darker pieces. Well, here's a little limb I've got to highlight. Um, I guess I'll use it in the shadows, but I only want to use it in the shadows because uh, otherwise I think it'll just be too much. Now, how have... Let's see. I think I've done almost all this fencing. And I can always, at any time, trim off any little threads that become too obvious. And I have a couple packs. The, some of these fabric markers are relatively inexpensive. So I usually buy like two packs at a time because that way some of the colors are used more than others. Greens, blacks, used a lot where reds and blues not as much so and then I take like this little stone pillar for that po fence post I outline that give a little definition to some of these plants but as you can see there's no right or wrong with landscaping and if something like I say if something doesn't work right then you can come back and yank it out or you could throw the whole thing away and start again it's just your time and a little bit of fabric but I really enjoy it it's uh, very relaxing and um, reminds me of being a child I'm gonna come under and put a little bit more under this guy's neck to outline him oh and I didn't outline his feet poor little thing was floating didn't have any feet all right, and I can always come and put a very tiny little line to ground some of these clumps so they're not floating. That's another thing, you know, when you outline, you help prevent things from floating. And um, like I might come and put a little shadow under some of the feet like that just to make sure they don't appear to be floating. Like that. Alright. I still think I need to do more to highlight the water. So I'll be working on that. But I like... Let's, let's take a good look at it. If you want to see the before, well, I'll see if I can add a still shot of the before. I think, but you, as you can see, it, it really brightens it up a lot. And I think I need to add a little more definition to my sheep. So what I will do with the sheep is use, use this ink tint because I can control it a little more.
not all, not all of my sheet were hit with the gel medium, so I'll make sure that the colors that I have put on are working. Okay. All right. Let's go up. I have not put gel medium yet on the mountains. Let me go up here. Putting some white up here. Alright. I found my pencil sharpener. Alright. I'm going to come in here and put some gel medium on these mountains. And you might have noticed I added a little touch of green to the gray. All right. Now, Having this gel medium on the mountains gives me an opportunity to come in with the white. And let's see if you can make sure you can see it. And add the lighter color up at the top. Let's see. Yeah, see that? See how it just really added some highlights. And I can come down a little bit too. Put them here and there where edges of, mount, of rock formations show. So I think that's looking pretty good. All right. So let's see if I can't do more of that to this water. Let me get some of the highlight in here. You know what I might do with this? I also have the ink tense blocks. So. So, one of the things I can do is pick up some of that white and put it on here. Okay. So what I'm doing is taking the brush with medium on it and I'm rubbing it on the white block and then putting it where I want on this mountain fabric. That will give the mountain a lot more definition. All right, And just make sure that when you're done with the ink tense blocks that you don't mix the colors and you give it a chance to dry before you put it away. I like the, the the ink tense white, but it's it's hard. It's hard to use at times. 
I'm not sure the medium lets it fully come through. So, all right. The last thing I'm going to work on. Oh, and let me show you my mountains. I think, I think it's starting to look more mountainy, isn't it? And I like the addition of the green that I put into the mountains. I, uh, I, I like what that's doing. Alright, because I wanted the interesting color in the mountains. But I like that hint of green too. And I, one thing I'm worried about is I don't have... It's a whole lot of natural colors. I wanted to add the car so that that would give it something interesting. But, um... I had to add a few more details to the car. It was starting to look a little cartoonish. Don't want it to look cartoonish. So, as I add more details, it's better. All right. Okay. So I think now it's a good time for me to work on this tree. Now, I think that working with this brown might, oh yeah, that is good with the tree. Because you don't, Remember, the more colors you use, you don't want it to look like a cartoon. So the more different colors you use, the less cartoonish it will look. The one problem about markers is you can't get them in as many colors as the ink tents. I have the ink tents 24 pack of uh, colors. But it comes, I think, up to 75. Now, they're 60 some dollars, but, you know, you just have to decide if you like this enough to be worth the investment. And I definitely do. So, I will be looking into getting those at some point. Because I really feel like that um, art quilts are going to be my predominant joy what I love to do best and that's so funny because when I started I was a confirmed traditional quilter I didn't understand this art quilt stuff I was into practical art <laughs> and I've changed now I love doing art quilts because it just reminds me of drawing and painting which I used to do a good amount of You know, I wish I could go back and do school over again and pay more attention in art class. I always loved it, but I think I paid too much attention to boys and not enough to things that would put me in good stead for my future. And uh, ladies, we know not everything good comes from boys. A lot of the problems in my life have come from, well, men who were boys. <laughs> Luckily, I don't have that problem now. That's why I told my girls, get your education, know how to take care of yourself before you commit yourself to anyone else. Because you know what? We always think other people have the answers. And sometimes we're the only ones that have the answers that we need. So we need to be able to hear our own voices. I love that I've left little bits of sky peeking through. I'm 
my daughter and I went to see Book Club. It was cute. It just bothers me a lot of times when they have women playing much younger roles. As if somehow they're not, they can't just be the age they are. And that bothers me. If you look up the trees, it, it, it is just, you see definition. I'm looking out the window right now at the tree right behind my house. And you see definition, but there's not a, you know, it's not, it's not like you don't really notice individual leaves. You just notice a lot of lines and. All right. Now. So, you'll notice there's a lot of lines showing. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and put a little medium. Even though this is marker, it still will help it blend a little better. Since I've found that it does, it does soften up. The lines just a touch but don't expect it. it's not like ink tents ink tents is made so that when it's wet it melts and if you you know if you've ever used the children's watercolors those little pots of color that melt when you add water to them and um, so and that's what ink tents are except it's permanent fabric dye. It's not just a colorant, it's a dye. But I think I like this a lot better. Now notice that my mountains, getting everything a little wet, tends to stretch the fabric. So I'm going to put a little more glue. And then I might lay an iron an iron safe Teflon sheet. I don't want to get this medium on the bottom of my iron. So I might take a Teflon sheet and then just press this all down. But let me hold it up again let you see. So what do you think? I think the tree looks a lot better. I think that does. I think I'm going to use some of this brown and make some more definition in this tree also. The fabric does pretty good, but sometimes you can just add that little touch that um... So what do you think? Do you think it's improved? I think so. I might have outlined a couple things like this a little much. Okay, so I don't like this outline under here. Let's see what I can do. First thing, I can take some green marker and try to distract you from it. Then I can take some ink tints and try to color over it. Okay, then I can take the gel medium. And there. So right now it's a little darker because of the gel medium, but I think it takes away from that cartoon line look. So I like showing you how to make things better and then how to fix certain things. I noticed that over here it's looking a little pale so I'm going to brighten it up just a touch over here. Let me add and remember add plenty of different colors 
because as children we just used green and everything was green but now we know there's a whole lot more going on than just green just one shade of green it's best to use a hand pencil sharpener on the ink tents if you were to use electric you would end up sharpening off too much of this precious fabric dyeing ink so we don't want to do that alright so I'm darkening up this side over here now the only other thing I need is some yellow because uh, all grass has some spots where it's been chewed down or touched too much or just yellowed out so let me add that color okay and maybe just a little touch of some brown in here all right how's this okay all right now I'm running out of medium so let me I'll put the gel medium on here trying not to get it on the sheep because it will do a certain amount of running so we don't want to you're just careful with this just like you would be with a paint so that you don't um, overdo it you do not want to yeah I had, see how I noticed how it was too dark before and now I'm coming in with the medium and the brush and kind of scrubbing a little bit which takes off the excess now once this is this is all dry and once it's all dry I will then now see that that's a little but you know what I think it's good in a way first I started to say it was too bright compared to over here but I forgot the shadow from the tree so what I need to do is come over here and a little more and everything that's under that shadow aha so I'm using a shadowy green that good old olive shadowy putting it under the fence rail because there is a shadow and see this is something I had forgotten but the fence rail leaves a shadow so I've got to leave a shadow all right see how when you just work on it it just kind of kind of comes to you there all right now I need a dark green this is a teal green let's see a little bit of this be good yeah because you know shadows are blues and grays so teal green is a bluey green that's not bad all right and this makes perfect sense I totally forgot about having the different tones in here now this is going to be a heavier shadow than this so I keep that in mind and don't overdo it okay let's see Oh, forgot the yellow. That's what I forgot. Got to have some yellow. Okay. Now, don't want to pour new medium out. So let's see what I can do with this. Get every last bit out. You know, the farther I can make my supplies go, the more landscapes I can do. Not a bad thing. All right. So. Okay. And 
trick my white. I want to put a little bit more white back into these sheets. And it might not show a lot now, but it will when it dries. Okay. I like it. All right. So now let's see if we got the shadow under the tree. Oh, yeah. I think that's much better. So out where... Out where these are, it's a lot lighter. But then as you get under the tree, see it's lighter there, but then as you get under the tree, you get a deeper shade. Oh, I just saw another place. Um, right here. All right. So let me get my dark green. Okay. And use up every bit of, okay, that's two greens, so I'm going to come in here with a little tan. Let's give it a little earthiness. Let's give that good old olivey green. And remember the other color, the last one I want to give it is a little touch of yellow. All right, and I'm going to have to add just a touch more medium. Okay, got it. In fact, even got some of there. All right. Then I'll make sure everything's in place and dried. And I hope I mentioned this fully. I know I started talking about it. But the last thing that I will do is give it a good iron. And when I iron it, that will um, set these dyes. And then you can wash it. And it's as good as any other kind of dye. Once you've set it, it's yours. So I will be setting it. Like I said, I'll probably use a press cloth so I don't get the gel medium on. I don't want to get the gel medium on the, um, on the iron. So... Okay. Where I got too much green. I come in here and go the other way with the yellow. Kind of see if I can knock it down just a touch. And then, yeah. Everything is to get that gradual fade in. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Now, one more hit with some yellow. Now, let's see. Let's see now if we've got more of the shadow that's blending. I think once it dries, I'm going to let it dry 
and then look at it again and I think it's going to be pretty good. All right. So I've got quite a mess here to clean up. And I'm going to let you see this side. And over to this side. I haven't figured out what to do with that sun yet. Hmm. Hmm. So next time I'll figure out what to do with the sun. And the sunset here is just a little bright. Let me see. If I were to add some blue into this, like that, and then if I were to add, where is that white? ink tints. So I added a little touches of blue and then if I add some white and a little more blue. Where is that pretty blue? Just very gentle. Because I've got to blend it into the sky and I know I can do it with thread paint, but what if I try to do a little bit now? I'm kind of liking that. Alright, now I think I'll be buying some more gel medium soon. Okay. Now, what does how does this? Oh, I like it better. The reason I like it better is it's instead of just blob, this blob of a sunset, it now blends more with the rest of the sky. So that's a good, good start. That's a good start on working with that. All right, so we'll, we'll do some more work on that next time. I think I still need to do some work on those mountains. I still got a lot of, uh, a lot of streaks going here. Let me see something. Might be time for a little touch more. Some medium scrumming. I mean, the, the workout I give these brushes, huh? I have to keep a lot of brushes around. But I think that's better already. Let's see. What do you think? Yeah, still I'll still keep working on that. Okay. Okay, just another step. It's starting to come out of that awkward teenage stage.